Welcome to Wonders and Miracles podcast, where we celebrate miraculous moments in everyday lives. I'm Liza Lawrence. I'm glad to have you join me as we celebrate wonders and miracles together. Okay, well, I'm here with Danielle today from Utah, and she's going to share a miracle journey and story with us that took place about two years ago when her husband was diagnosed with cancer. And I know her message is that miracles look different. It might not be exactly what we think, you know, a healing or something, but a lot of times miracles take place through the journey and the change in perspective and the things we learn. And so I'm really excited to hear all the details and the things that she has learned through this journey. So Danielle, thanks for being on the show and tell us your story. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really happy to be here and happy to share. It's interesting when we get to look back, right? Hindsight is twenty twenty, And when you're in the middle of really hard things, you ask yourself and you ask God, why? <laughs> and there's been many, many times like that for my life. But the most recent was this experience of my husband going through cancer. And I really debated as I kind of thought how I wanted to share this story in the best way of where do I even begin? Because some of the biggest miracles actually happened in the preparation that led up to it even becoming a challenge, right? So maybe I'll just drop us right in the middle of it all. And it would have been the summer of 2017. And we were in the middle of fighting cancer with my husband, but he was terrified of chemotherapy. And I'll give you more background on, on our approach in a minute here. But basically, we had decided that we wanted to try everything possible to help his body fight this cancer instead of going straight to chemo. So that's where we were at. And we had done a lot of research and had made some very inspired decisions. We weren't going into this blindly. We, we did feel like we were following God's will for us. And I kept giving it back to my husband and saying, what feels correct for you? Because when you try to enter the world of alternative health for cancer treatment, it's completely overwhelming and confusing and frustrating and scary because you don't have a doctor in a white coat reassuring you with statistics and studies. You have people's stories. You have principles of nutrition. You have, you know, what little understanding we actually have of cancer and of the immune system and all of these things. So we were in this place of doing the very best we could. And we had decided on a certain protocol, and that involved a lot of fruits and vegetables. It involved what's known as a raw vegan diet, literally just fruits and vegetables, which is pretty extreme because it's hard to get full on fruits and vegetables. We'll talk more about that in a minute, but we were also doing a lot of juicing. He would have a huge thing of carrot juice every day. And he was taking a lot of herbal supplements. And it was dinner time, and I served him this salad that was just a joyless plate. <laughs> it was, I mean, it was raw kale and there was no real dressing on it. It was just all of this nutritional powerhouse stuff, but very joyless. And my poor husband, I put it on the table and I, I walked back into the kitchen and I hear this slam from the dining room and I turn around and my six foot two 30 something year old husband is literally throwing a tantrum over this kale salad and he slammed his silverware down and he stormed out of the room. I think he said something like, I just can't do this. He more yelled it than said it. And he left the room. And it was at that point that all of the fear came back, right? If he can't do this, then what? Where are we at? And as the mom, as the wife, we, we have four little children. And he was diagnosed with testicular cancer. It was stage two. He had had surgery. The tumor had been removed, but the cancer had spread to his lymph nodes. One lymph node, to be precise. And so doctors were telling us, you've got to do chemo, you've got to do chemo. And his type of cancer is actually very easy to cure with chemo. They, they're telling us that it's a 98% cure rate with the protocol that we have. And he did, he just did not want that poison in his body. And I was right there with him. I did not want to go through that with him. 
And so I was very, very supportive of him and his desire to do alternative methods first and to try that first. But when he had that fit, um, that really put me on my heels. And up to this point, I had felt like his life was in my hands. That, okay, if we're going to try to heal this with food, then uh, who feeds you? Well, that's me. I'm the feeder. And I was the one doing a lot of the research and presenting different treatment options and ideas to him. So that was very terrifying and defeating to have him completely just come apart. And this is not, he is a very emotionally intelligent, very mature adult. So to see him throw a fit like that was very unsettling. But it was at that moment that to me, I, you know, the kids were gone. I think they'd already gone downstairs. And my husband, of course, was doing whatever he was doing in the other room. And I, I remember very vividly sitting down at the kitchen table and praying and saying, Lord, I don't know what to do. How am I supposed to help him if, if he can't do this? What are we supposed to do? And clear as day, the words came into my mind, you know exactly what to feed him. Just trust what you've learned and do it. And I knew exactly what that meant. And what that meant was now all the preparation that had happened mm. up to that point. So rewind most recently, I had finished reading a book called How Not to Die by Dr. Michael Greger, where he makes a case, a very scientific very evidence-based case for a whole food, plant-based way of eating. And I had read that book in its entirety probably by the month of March. So this was a couple months before my husband's diagnosis. And I got to tell you, I'm not a reader. And this book is huge. I think it's 400 pages. Now, half of those are cited scientific studies. But I read that thing cover to cover. And by the time I finished it there in March of 2017, I wanted to shout it from the rooftops that, wow, look at what a plant-based diet can do and look what the foods that God has put on this earth can do to support our health. And I learned so much. And at that point, I was simply just educating myself for myself and for my family, especially for my children. Rewind be before that. I came across a film called Forks Over Knives on Netflix, and it got my attention so strongly because it talked about heart disease, and I have heart disease in, in my family history and in my genetics, and I always kind of had braced myself for going down the same path that I watched my grandparents go down of heart attacks and strokes and bypass surgeries and all those things, and so when I came across a film like that, Forks Over Knives, saying that heart disease could be completely prevented and even reversed with a plant-based diet, I was floored. Here I was thinking, no, this is all genetics. And now somebody's telling me, no, actually you have some say in your health outcomes. I, I jumped for joy. And I went to my husband and I said, Blaze, what do you think about switching to a plant-based diet? <laughs> I should say this was fall. This was like October of 2016. And he literally laughed in my face and turned around and left the room. Like it was just not even going to be a conversation at that point. We were totally like normal eating, you know, hamburgers. The standard and American cheese, diet. Pizza. Yeah, that exactly. sad diet. Yep. <laughs> yes. That was us. And that's how both he and I had been raised. We were both sugar addicts and ice cream addicts. So for me to come to him with that, was just hilarious to him, really. But that set off this whole journey of me just learning and awestruck of the power of nutrition and just natural food. So with that backdrop, let me explain that when, when God told me that I already knew what to feed my husband, that was not a raw vegan diet where we live, where we try to just sustain him on fruits and vegetables and kale salads. What I had learned is that we can prevent and reverse disease with a whole food plant-based diet based on whole grains, legumes or beans, potatoes, and then of course, fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. That's what I had learned that is healing, that those foods can be healing. And we had kind of gotten caught up in a lot of messaging that, no, you have to go raw vegan, 
and it has to be perfect and all of these things. And we were just tied up in knots of trying to do this protocol perfectly. And of course that blew up in our faces. So when my husband got diagnosed with cancer, that was in May. It was actually the week that we were supposed to go on a big trip for a 10th wedding anniversary. We, we had big plans. We were going to go back to a fantastic resort that we had gone to actually for our honeymoon 10 years before. And we were super excited. And then he, he had this doctor's appointment and the doctor just looked him straight in the face and said, this is cancer. He, and he just, he just dropped that C word right away. And my wow. poor husband, he called me and I think I was out with the kids. We were like getting smoothies or something. And he told me that over the phone. And I just, I don't even know how to explain how that feels. I mean, it's just like somebody smacked me in the face with a two by four, just out of nowhere. Right. Shock. And so yeah. we were both reeling. Shock yeah. is a perfect word. So we were both reeling and there was of course a lot of decisions to be made in that moment. But I have to say that from that point, it was so crazy to look back and look at everything that I had just learned about nutrition. Yeah. I immediately, after I got off the phone with Blaze, I was immediately in this conversation with God of, oh, <laughs> oh, okay, I see now. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for giving me what I need. And then it was just a matter of coming together with my husband. After he laughed in my face back in October of 2016, it took a few months of me doing more research and, and sharing more information with him. But he eventually did come around to the point that in January of 2017, we both were pretty much in a consensus that, you know, I think, yeah, switching to a plant-based diet would be really great for us and for our kids. And that was a journey in of itself. But what was so interesting is that he would eat anything that I made at home, but when he would go to work, he would go out to lunch and he would have a cheeseburger or pizza almost every day for lunch. And then he'd come home and eat plant-based with me. And then he had like stashes of Costco size snack bars and treats and things that, that I made him keep downstairs because we were really trying to make this change for our whole family and to change our food environment. But he was still so addicted to sugar and to dairy and all these things. So he was about 80% plant-based by the time we got this cancer diagnosis. So when he called me and told me that we're probably looking at a cancer diagnosis, I said, well, what are you, you going to do? And he's like, well, I don't want chemo. Wow. He's, and so that's when he said, he's like, okay, so I know I haven't been 100% with you in this plant-based thing, but I want, I want to be now. So. He basically said, like, show me your ways. <laughs> wow. And I was, I was pretty gung-ho by that time. I was pretty much like 95% there. So we went on this journey together. We did end up going on our vacation. We decided to go and have this trip together and to kind of like stop our heads from spinning for a minute. And we decided together, we're like, we're going to do this. We're going to go home. We're going to kick cancer in the face and we're going to be okay. Anytime my husband and I make life decisions. We always take it to the Lord. And we try to do our best to kind of study it out and make our own decisions and then take it to God and say, God, we feel like this would be a really good route. What do you think? And, and we wait for that approval. And, and we definitely got that approval from the Lord. And so we moved forward and it was amazing. It was really amazing to navigate this journey. And it was like breadcrumbs, right? Of We didn't get it all at once. So kind of like what you said in the beginning, like our miracles are going to look different than what we want. And it's going to come at different times than we want. And so for us, the miracle, it was line upon line. It was, it was step by step. It was read more about this, research this. And so we kind of pieced it together with the Lord's help. So the amazing thing was that it worked. This one lymph node that they were watching had grown. And then we were doing scans and we were watching it shrink. Hmm. And Blaze and I were just, we were ecstatic that what we were doing was working. So there was one point, it maybe took five or six months of doing this, that we did it enough times. We went through this 12 week herb protocol and we were just doing all the things we could think of, mostly nutritionally to help his body fight this cancer. And we, we went into the doctor and they were going to give us the results of our latest scan. And sure enough, they said, um, your lymph node is back to the size of a normal, healthy lymph node. It was interesting because the doctor said, 
which is really strange because cancer doesn't shrink without chemo were the words that they used. And so they said, so we're thinking maybe this wasn't cancer in the lymph node in the first place. And so <laughs> my husband and I, we went home, we did a victory lap. We were so thrilled. We were so relieved. But he went right back to all of his old ways. It was like he crossed the finish line and he was done. Mm -hmm. And this became such a huge lesson to me, which I will share more of this because this this all did not happen in a vacuum, right? While all of this was going on, so he was diagnosed in May, we decided to treat it with food. And that summer, we went on a family reunion with his family. We went to Bear Lake and we were in a cabin and I, I woke up early one morning and I wanted to go for a run. And so here we are, we're, we're really fighting for our lives with food and we're doing the best we can. We're feeling okay. We're feeling optimistic at this point. We hadn't had our huge success of, wow, maybe, maybe we're done by now. We were still in the thick of it, but I was out running and I was just reflecting again, just on the preparation that God had given me, not only in that way, but also just the a whole journey, not only just for my husband, but for me, like I had learned so much over the last decade, really, of how to take care of myself in mental and emotional ways. Um, I had learned a lot of healing protocols and energy tapping and things. And I had learned a lot. I had been through a, a car accident that forced me to start taking care of my body better so that I was not in pain all the time. So I explored yoga and running and weightlifting and so many things. And here I was out on this run at the top of this mountain. And it was almost like I could look back and see all of those touch points that God had put on my path to help me be where I was at that moment, which was a very, a very good place for me personally. And in that moment of reflection, this was another big miracle that happened for me was, I call it a tap on the shoulder. Again, that voice just clear as day as I'm reflecting on all of these wonderful things. And wow, look how blessed and lucky I am to know how to take good care of myself and how to take good care of my family's health. And in that very moment, the, the words came into my mind, I didn't give all of this to you for you to keep it to yourself. I gave this to you so you could share it with others and help others do the same for their families. And it was a weird, I mean, I know what the voice of God sounds like to me. I, I'm very comfortable receiving messages from my Heavenly Father. And so I knew, I knew that that was from Him, but I almost like kind of looked <laughs> left and right. Of like, what was that? Because that <laughs> don't tell me that. <laughs> and no, it was strange because at that point I had educated myself a ton, just of watching all the documentaries and reading all the books, like this How Not to Die book and so many others. And I did have this growing passion for health and wellness, which was so strange because I was not like the athletic or the health-minded person before at all. But here I was, and the Lord is telling me that I'm supposed to help other people with health and with wellness. And I'm thinking, how? My bachelor's degree is in music. Okay, I was a musician, and I was a music teacher. And I thought, okay, I've learned a lot. But then it just like, it opened this Pandora's box of questions. And I'm so glad I asked the questions because God kept answering them. And he kept guiding me on another breadcrumb journey of, well, go take this plant-based nutrition certification. Now take this plant-based cooking course. Now take this other, this lifestyle coaching course. And then it was like, okay, cool. Now I know all of these things to tell people what to do to take better care of themselves. But I, even after all of those certifications, I thought, okay, I, I took it back to God. I said, okay, I know what to teach people. But I know from my experience with my husband that just knowing what to do is one thing and actually helping them do it and do it in sustainable ways mm -hmm. is a whole other ball of wax. So I took that to God and he said, well, there's, there's this thing called health coaching that you can learn the skills to help people make changes. And I was like, yeah, that, okay, mm -hmm. great. And again, breadcrumb trail did my research a ton, found the most amazing health coaching training, went through three levels of that while putting my husband through this cancer healing protocol. It was insane, yeah. really. 
intense. Um, yeah. It was very intense and it was a little overwhelming, but it's so interesting to me that God chose to put these events side by side because yeah. while I was being educated in nutrition and I was getting certified as a health coach and I was learning those skills and now I have those tools that I can help people and I was able to use them. I came home and used them on my <laughs> husband. That was so amazing. And taking him through that journey, going through that journey with him and recognizing that extreme changes, even for extreme reasons like cancer, won't give you sustainable change. And that has overlaid my entire approach as I, as I followed that path God wanted me to take in helping other people create healthy lifestyles. It was from the very beginning, okay, I will, but I'm going to find ways to help people do it sustainably. Mm -hmm. No more of this fad diet stuff. No more of this all or nothing. No more of this yo-yo garbage. And he taught me that through this journey that my husband and I were able to go on together. I think anyone that goes through hard things can look back like I can now and say, oh yeah, of course, of course I needed to go through that intense, very difficult time because if I didn't, I wouldn't know what I know now. And this, this experience has been no exception for me. So I really just, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for the Lord's wisdom. I'm so glad that he, his ways are not my ways and he can see that big picture. And he saw me to me. That's, that's the miracle too. He was so aware of me. And even though this was my husband's journey and he could get on here and tell the story and, and he's going to pull different lessons and experiences out of it than I am. But for me, I knew that God was aware of us and I knew that God had a purpose for me that I was not even aware of yet because I was on this path. I was going to go and go back and get my master's degree and go teach at college and go do the music thing more. And this just came out of left field of, nope, you're going to be a health and wellness coach and you're going to teach people how to adopt a plant-based lifestyle in sustainable ways. And you're going to help moms and families figure this out. And so now that's what I'm doing. And I got that tap on the shoulder in August of 2017 and I registered my business, my Spark Health Coaching business the very next month because I, wow. I just, that's how I work. I kind of jump. <laughs> when, um, when you get I it, you go fast. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I'm so grateful and it's, it has been amazing. There's been times that I know that I'm connecting with people that I was meant to connect with. And they feel that way too, that they've tried all the things, or maybe they even have tried a plant-based diet, but they hadn't yet met someone that had the skills to coach them through the process, or they hadn't met someone yet that had this more sustainability mantra that I, that I hold so strongly to. So I should circle back and I should finish the story with my husband. So when he did the victory lap and went back to his old ways, you can bet that that cancer came back with a vengeance. Wow. And that lymph node shot up to the size of a golf ball. This was three months later. We went in for our next scheduled scan and we're kind of expecting to just have it still be a clean bill of health, but oh, it was not. It was not. And um, my poor husband had to make a decision right then and there. Okay, where, where do we go from here? And so he asked for six more weeks to try to go, to go back, right? Mm -hmm. To yo-yo back and get back on all the protocols he was doing. And he took those six weeks. He did it very gung-ho, just like he did before. And he decided that if we went back for another three months, for the next scan that if it stayed the same or if it was larger we would do chemo and if it had decreased at all that that would be his sign that he's supposed to just keep going with this and that he can beat it again with food and nutrition and we went back and it was about the same maybe like a tenth of a something tiny bit bigger and so that was enough for him and he was exhausted by this yeah. point. This was a whole year later. We did this for a year. So this is now May of 2018. And he said, okay, let's do the chemo. 
that was really hard for me, especially at this point, I was starting to take on this role as a health and wellness coach and as a plant-based nutrition expert. I had all my certifications and it felt like a failure. And that was hard for my pride to swallow, but I had to hand it over to God and I had to hand it over to my husband because yeah. it wasn't mine. It wasn't my cancer. It wasn't my body. It wasn't my decision. And my job was to be the support no matter what he decided to do. So that's what we did. And so he went through three months, May, June, and July, of some of the most intense chemotherapy protocols you can be put on, which no one really told us that <laughs> in the beginning. And I had no idea what we were in for at that point. But again, it was just this ongoing trying to stay connected to God and have him carry us through this and step by step helping us know what to do. There was one night that my husband got a very, 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 very bad fever. And that was terrifying because there were a lot and that we knew that that was a risk. We, we knew that there was a high risk of infection. And of course, his immune system is completely gone by this point. This is about halfway through our, our chemo protocols. And there was just so many times that we had to turn to the Lord and say, okay, do we go to the emergency room? What, what do we do? What's the next step? There were so many decisions that had to be made. So when we talk about healing, when we talk about miracles, it's not usually a flash of light and a miraculous wave of a wand. It's step-by-step. Step. It's keep depending on me, I think, is what God mm -hmm. says to us. Just keep depending on me and I will carry you through this. There's the hymn that's one of my absolute favorites, has been for years and years and years. It's called How Firm a Foundation. And it talks about how, I think it's based on scriptures in Isaiah, where it talks about how God, he knows that we're going to go through fire. He knows that we're going to go through deep water. He knows that all of these challenges are part of life. They are part of life. But his promise is that he will carry us through it and that he will consecrate it to our good. And in Romans 8, I love the scripture that Paul talks about that, that all things work together for our good, for those that depend on the Lord, basically. Mm -hmm. And we have, we've found that to be true. And so in those moments where I'm asking for that wave of a wand and that snap of the finger for things to go away, I know that God has more wisdom and more love for me than to, than to grant that wish because he knows that there's a purpose in that whole journey, even if it does mean pain and suffering. I'm so grateful to have that perspective now. And that perspective can carry us through the hard times too if we try really hard to, to keep our heads above the water enough to see that and to trust that. It just takes a lot of trust. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think, especially right now, as we're all feeling the weight of the world and what's going on, to keep that perspective. God is here in the journey with us, and it's a journey. And if we rely on Him and tap into Him, we can be guided to what's right for us personally. So. Absolutely. I really, I, I'm really glad you said that because that was one of the things that I, I felt impressed as I was kind of preparing to meet with you today was I asked God, I said, what's the message? What, what am I supposed to share? And the application is that because we all yeah. are going through a really unprecedented, fearful time right yeah. now. And we might be tempted to, you know, kind of shake our fist at heaven a little bit and say, why, yeah. why are we going through this? And when is it going to end? And there's so much uncertainty and there's so much fear and anxiety wrapped up in this. So for me, it's just been a practice and it's been an effort to try to find the good in it and to try to decide, okay, what am I going to keep? Because I've changed my whole life <laughs> to accommodate the changes that have happened. But I think that's part of the purpose. I, I really believe yeah. that there, again, there's going to be some good that comes out of this. And God does consecrate even the most terrible things to our good. Whether we see it now or not, it all works together. I totally agree. I totally agree. I, something I heard and I've loved and just kind of held on to over the years is that our wisdom comes through our struggle. And so the things totally. that we've struggled with, that we've prayed about, we've wrestled with, create such yeah. growth and wisdom. And that's 
a huge part of why we're here is to learn and grow and figure things out. We all do want that rescue. <laughs> we all desire that. Like, can yes. you just rescue me and take this away? But I think God is more interested in our growth than the Absolutely. rescue. And yes, he Absolutely. rescues. I mean, at the end, mm. <laughs> we obviously yeah. cannot get there ourselves. We need yeah. the savior as the redeemer, but he is interested in our growth and, and through that journey. But I love your journey so much. It reminds me a lot of my own. Actually, we didn't deal with cancer, but I have a son with sensory processing disorder. We thought autism for a while and diet was our first approach. Mm. And it was interesting because it was very God led, like do this, yeah. now learn this, now watch this, now go here, now do this. And the conversation with your husband cracked me up when you're like, I think we should do plant-based. And he laughed at you. <laughs> My husband did the very same thing when I said, I would like to change our diet completely. And he was like, uh, what are you talking about? Are you crazy? I'm like, I'm going to yeah. throw away all our food. Are you okay with that? Are you cool? <laughs> and you no, know, it was yeah. some of our biggest battles, <laughs> but well worth it. And we've been that way for about 10 years. And my husband has over the years said, I'm so glad that you really took that nutrition into and yeah. helped our family do this because our yeah. immune systems are strong. We stay healthy. Yeah. And anyway, it's been interesting to watch, but absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You're not the only one that I've heard those experiences from. I get to talk to people every day that that's been their experience on, on all those levels, but it yes. is hard to uh, bring that conversation to the husband usually is the problem. <laughs> And I actually don't recommend that people do it overnight. Don't do the cold turkey thing. But yeah, isn't it amazing that, again, those miracles, God already has them ready for us. We just yeah. don't have the information yet. And then what I love doing is offering the support because even when you have the information, that doesn't seem to be enough for most people. So mm -hmm. so powerful. I, I do love that. So what do you offer? Because I found that I had fire for the deed because it came to me mm. through God, but my husband yeah. did not. And he yeah. hadn't received that personal revelation like mm. I did. And I was yeah. doing it for my children. And so that was enough motivation also. Oh, yeah. Mama what Bear. do you do? Mm -hmm. Right. What do you do mm -hmm. for people then to help them own it and be sustainable? Because I think that is a challenge for so many. It is. It really, really is. Well, I think the answer is starting on a really individual basis. And the, the mantra for sustainability is gradual change. I, I help my clients find what I call the flow. If you've heard of kind mm -hmm. of flow theory, that if it mm -hmm. becomes too challenging or if it becomes too easy to uninteresting, then those are the two reasons we stop doing something. So I'm always working with my clients to keep tabs on that for them. And it's always a question of, well, what feels doable for your next step? So I even tell people, I'm like, you will never see a Daniel Dinkelman program for me, like, like a template of here's how you do this because it is eventual. Mm -hmm. And where some people are, it's harder for them to give up one thing than it is the other. There's different learning curves. It, everyone's just in a different place, which is why I love coming side by side with my clients and helping them figure out what that is for them. And honestly, I, I'm a spiritual person and I feel that out with my clients. Not all of my clients are spiritual, but even those that don't believe in God necessarily, they do believe in their own intuition. And so mm -hmm. I'm always encouraging them to tap into that. And, and like you said, for you, one of the biggest motivations for you was that you, you knew that this was God's will for you. Mm -hmm. And many of my clients are in that same place. I'm actually a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, or if you're familiar with LDS or Mormon, that's the church I belong to. And we have a book of scripture called the Word of Wisdom. And it's actually a law of health. It's, a, it's guidelines from God in scripture, encouraging us to eat healthy natural foods and so many people come to me because they have watched food documentaries and studied the word of wisdom put two and two together and said wow i feel so strongly that god wants me to do this for my family right now and so we take it from there and we do i do help them kind of make sure that god is still in that and one of the things i did with my husband was after we researched the science 
we did, the very next thing we did was we went to the word of wisdom. We went to our book of scripture in an attitude of prayer. And we said, Heavenly Father, we've learned certain things about nutrition. And we want to know if this is in line with your law, with your truth of nutrition. And we both decided that we would do that individually. And we did. And we came back together. And I said, God said yes to me. God said, absolutely. And he's like, God said the same thing to me too. And he's like, okay, fine. I guess we're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> was, was, that's, what made, that's a big part of what made the big difference of October saying no way and January saying, oh, right. Let's, let's take steps. Yeah. Yeah. So how's he doing now? It's been two years. Is he eating whole food plant-based or is he, and, and did the chemo help? How did that go? Yeah, I guess I should finish the story, shouldn't I? He is well. He is cancer-free, quote-unquote, whatever the heck that means, because <laughs> I feel like it is now a skeleton in our closet that we will never be yeah. free of. So yeah. I actually don't even like those saying those words, but that's how people think and talk about cancer these days. So, so yeah, so he did his, his three months of chemo, and it worked. It did what the doctors hoped it would do. And we were very thrilled about that, but there were a lot of side effects that came with the chemo. It has completely wrecked his digestive system, and we are still, a year later now, trying to heal his gut. Gut. And that just, uh, that takes so long, truly. Yes, it's been yeah. taking a lot of patience. So we're still on the journey in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. We feel out of the woods with the cancer. The chemo also gave him neuropathy in his feet. And I think, I don't know if he's just gotten used to it now and he just doesn't complain about it as much, or maybe it has settled down, but that was really hard. And it was an unfortunate thing that like, that's what we were trying so hard to avoid. Yeah. And yeah. again, where I feel like his story is such a cautionary tale that even if you think you're fighting for your life, please make sustainable changes and, and look at it from a habit standpoint and a lifestyle yes. standpoint. Don't just, just shove all of this nutrition in a pill and swallow it and expect that to heal you and then go back to the way you were before. We have to assimilate it into who we are and what we do every day of our lives for, for positive reasons, for, for loving ourselves and loving our bodies and wanting to honor ourselves and honor God by taking good care of this body he's given us. So yeah, that's kind of how it ended for him. And who knows, maybe we had to go on this journey for him to really gain his own testimony of the power of food. Because now I would say I'm still probably about still like <laughs> 95%. Like once in a while I have an occasional treat that's kind of not whole food plant-based. I would say he's around like 85 to 90 though. And I'm so grateful for that. And, and now we are, we're united in how we think and feel about food, how we talk about food, how we teach to our children, how we model to them. And that's such a blessing. I'm so grateful that, yeah. that he has his own conviction and that he now can go and share his experience with people. And he comes home and tells me things. He's like, I know you talk about this all day because I'm very active now um, in sharing this message, but he gets opportunities too to share his story and to share what he's learned about food, which most of us know diddly squat about nutrition, really. I know. Um, so I'm it's grateful. True. I'm grateful that he, he's definitely learned his own lessons and gained his own testimony through all of that. And I think for men, hearing it from other men is really oh powerful. Gosh. Really Huge. powerful. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah powerful story and journey. And I love, I just love seeing how people, when we do listen and follow those little breadcrumbs and those guidances that God gives us to see the changes, to recognize. I, I love, I love watching that journey for people. I teach human development. And so oh, I love yes. watching people develop. I love watching how we change oh, and yeah. how we learn and how we grow through life because it's just a beautiful process. And when yeah. we bring God into the picture, it, it becomes even more beautiful. I mean, it's yeah. very divine, this whole growth of who we are. But Absolutely. I love your story. I think it's beautiful. Thank you so much. So I did want to ask you, if people are interested in working with you, where can they find you? Sure. So my website is daniellewinkleman.com. And um, I have two coaching programs that I do. I, I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching for those that are really on a deeply personal health journey and they want 
the most support and the most results in the shortest amount of time. That is the best way that I've found is just one-on-one. -on -one. We meet every single week. We create a plan out of the gate and it is, I love what I do. <laughs> it is so amazing to partner with one of God's beautiful, amazing children and to just walk on that journey with them. And we dive into their mindsets and we take apart and put back together their habits. And we just, we, we do it all. We look at nutrition, we look at exercise, self-care, stress management, sleep, like all of these things fit together. It's not just one silver bullet. It is not just plant-based nutrition. And honestly, I think that's part of the formula that my husband was missing was that he wasn't addressing all of the other mental emotional things. It was all about the food. So that's what I do in my coaching. And I really do the same thing in my monthly membership coaching as well. That's just simply a group format of the same pattern that I use in my one-on-one. -on -one. And it's, it's very affordable. Both those programs are, are available on my website for more information. But anyone that wants to just reach out and talk, I'm more than happy to connect. I love hearing people's stories. I love answering people's questions. Best place to reach me is on Instagram. You can send me a direct message there. My handle is dd.healthcoach. Or I'm on Facebook as well. I actually have a free private Facebook group that people are more than welcome to come and hang out in there. We have over 200 women in there that we're all trying to figure this out together. And that's called Healthy Living with Danielle Dinkelman. And I do weekly videos in there and on a YouTube channel under the same name. So really, I'm, I'm all over the place, whatever you need. And I, I would love to connect with anyone that's on that health journey and is just ready to have someone in their corner. I love that. Thank you. And I think it's much needed because I know 10 years ago mm. when I started, I felt a lot of confusion and alone, like, oh, yeah. where do I go? And I found a program that helped me quite a bit. <laughs> but you do need support as you're going through these things. And so I think that's neat yeah. to offer that. Just a hand to hold someone to say, help me figure this out. I love that so much. Anything else you wanted to share? I think the biggest message that I have is that individual nature of God's miracles in our lives and of our health and wellness journey that your journey is going to look different than your sisters or your friends. And that's perfect. If we can lean into that, if we can trust our own intuition, and if we can trust our divine guidance, then we can make it through this just fine. I think it's when we fool ourselves that there's one answer for everyone, or that I have to do it exactly in the same way and in the same time and in the same sequence as someone else. That's where I think anything that keeps us stuck is not where God wants us to be. He wants us to be moving forward and developing and progressing in whatever way we are ready for next. And we can always go to God and say, Lord, what's next for me? I, you know, and we can take our challenges to him and say, I'm so frustrated. I've been stuck in this area or that area for so long. What's next? And again, not, not expecting the magic wand or the snap of the finger, but saying, okay, where do I go next? What's the next book? What's the next documentary even? Or whatever that is, I really, I have faith that, that God wants to give us those answers and lead us to those next steps. And, and I'm so grateful that that's true. And I just, I've found that to be true for myself. And I see that to be true for my clients that I don't always have the answers for them. And I will often put it back on them and say, well, have you asked God? Have you asked your, yourself what feels most correct for you? And I feel like that is always the next step is whatever feels true and, and connected there. And that just has to be enough. And taking it one step at a time is okay. Yeah, I love that. Amen. Thank you. I love that message. You're so welcome. Thanks for having me, Liza. It's a pleasure to share the story and to share the message. And I love what you're doing. So thank you so much for what you're doing with this podcast. Thank you so much for listening to this miracle story. Please subscribe to my channel. If you liked it, you can also find me on